Okay, pre-cal, in this video, we are starting unit seven. So the first thing I want to do is tell you that we are going to learn to deal with trigonometric identities to um, work on proofs and equations involving our trig identities. So the very first thing I wanna do in this video is talk about topic one, and let's just define an identity. It is a statement showing the equality of two quantities. So we've already talked about some of our identities, but I wanna show you the identities page that we're going to be using. The reciprocal identities we've already used in other uh, in other lessons, but and we've also used the quotient identities down here, but the new ones that we're gonna be using are the Pythagorean theorem identities, here they are right here, and we're also gonna be using the sum and difference identities. We won't use these two right here. So I'm gonna go back to the notes, and then I'm gonna be referring to this page as we look through uh, parts of coming videos. All right, so, the first thing we need to do is we need to learn how to multiply and factor um, uh, expressions, make a sentence, sorry, expressions with trig identities and trig functions in them. So what we want to, or not trig functions, but trig expressions. So if you'll notice in this very first example, we're gonna multiply these. Now, if you'll think about this, um, the way multiplication works. If we were gonna multiply 3x and 2x, we would get 6x squared. So something similar is going to happen here. We're going to have six, but rather than having sine x squared, it's going to be sine squared x. Sine x squared is something different altogether, and we will not be exploring that in this uh, particular course. So six sine squared x is how we write that. When we look at number two, we have to distribute this cosine x, so one times cosine x is cosine x, cosine x times cosine x, cosine squared x. Number three, um, we're gonna treat this just like we would if it were, if it looked something like this, like if it was two binomials multiplied together without sign in them. So we're gonna FOIL this just like we would something like this. So sine x times sine x is sine squared x, sine times three is three sine x, negative four sine x, and negative 12. These are like terms, so we will combine these. So we have sine squared x minus sine x minus 12. So that's what that would look like. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing in number four. We've got two cosine x plus one times three cosine x minus five. So we're gonna distribute this, so that gives me six cosine squared x, negative 10 cosine x, three cosine x, and negative five. And then I'm gonna combine my like terms again. Bam. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on number five. So I'm gonna distribute this. So five and two, that's 10. Sine squared x, negative five sine x, six sine x, and negative three. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Awesome. So um, the, we follow the same rules for multiplication that we do for everything. So I just want you to see what it looks like when we square sine or cosine, and this would apply to tangent, cosecant, cotangent, all of those. All right, so now let's look at some factoring. So I'm gonna switch colors here. So now we're basically going to undo what we just did. So that's what factoring is. It's essentially dividing each of your terms by something they have in common. So when we factor, I'm gonna look at my two terms. What do they both have in common that can factor out? Well, that would be a sine x. So if I take a sine x out of sine squared x, I'm left with a sine x. When I take sine x out of this sine x, I'm left with one. So that's how you do it, just factoring. And then this one right here, we have cosine squared x minus sine squared x. That is a difference of squares, so we factor it 
like we would any difference of squares, cosine x, cosine x here, sine x, sine x, positive, negative. Okay, here we have a trinomial. It's going to factor into two binomials, just like we would expect. Cosine squared x will be cosine x and cosine x. Three, of course, will be three and one. So I've got a three cosine x here and a one cosine x here. If I wanna combine those to get a negative two cosine x, I have to have the negative in front of the three and the positive in front of one. Okay, number nine's a little trickier because now we have a coefficient other than one in our lead term. So we are going to do this again. And then we've got two sine x and sine x. So now we want factors of six in these two positions that are going to combine here in a product and here in a product and then add to give me a negative one sine x. Okay, so let's figure out what those values are going to be. So if you'll notice here, it's not gonna be six and one because if we put a six here and a one here, then that's gonna give me six and two. That's not going to work. So what about two and three? 2 sine x and 6 sine x, that's not going to work. Let's try 3 and 2. We get a 3 sine x and a 4 sine x. Oh, that's a win. We want to make the 4 the negative and the 3 the positive. And that's how you factor involving your trig expressions.